my very special guest tonight is actor Gerald Webb. Hi, on Gerald. Good. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Thanks a lot. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, like I said, uh, you got some interesting sci-fi stuff that uh, the listener has been uh, sending me some emails about, and I feel as though this is my perfect opportunity to have you come on because there's some cool sci-fi movies that's been coming out in the last couple of years that's been uh, very interesting. But what I like to do is I like to start way back in 2006. Yes, it's only been five years, but I say way back anyways. But there's one movie that you were, um, if I'm mistaken, you were uh, you were like a uh, excuse me, a SWAT officer number two. The movie's called Nailed in 2006. I haven't seen this myself, but I will look for it. Um, what was the experience? Now, was this your first horror movie? Uh, it was my first horror movie. Uh, when I moved to L.A., it actually was one of the first bookings that I had as an actor. So I, it'll always have kind of a, a special place in my heart because I was fairly new to town and trying to figure it all out and um, met, went and read for this and was able to book a really small role and it was, and was very happy. Right. Now, so now, it was uh, also my first red carpet uh, when it came out, when they did the screening okay. of the first red carpet event, which was kind of cool, too. All right, now I'm going to ask you one quick question. Now, being that it is your first horror movie, um, it's hard to explain this. What did it? How was it for you to see, you know, like the uh, I'm obviously it's fake, but the gore scenes in a movie like that? I mean, was it weird for you at first to, to see that, or was it, you know, what I mean? No, because you know, I, it was kind of more at times. Certain little things would be a little novel, like oh, okay, that's how they do that, you know? Okay, yeah. You know, understand i mean it, the gore didn't really specifically bother me um you know later on i had some movies where the gore was even worse and different little things that have happened and you know it's always just kind of novel um but i do know that sometimes people do get taken aback by it. we had a uh i worked on a movie called reptosaurus and um there was a guy who there was so much fake blood that one of our crew members literally got sick to his stomach and had to leave the set area because he just couldn't handle it well, that's funny you said that because that's the next one I'm going to talk to you about. <laughs> that's funny, ironically enough. Like I said, Reptosaurus, that was in 2008. And believe it or not, it stars a guy that I grew up watching on TV. He played Buck Rogers in Gil Gerard. Yes, we both grew up watching Gil Gerard. So um, <laughs> uh, I, I've been really fortunate. When I look back, I've, I've worked with a very eclectic group of people who, when I was younger, I never thought I would ever work with, and uh, the list is the list is kind of crazy when I think about it. Uh, but yeah, Reptosaurus, uh, Christopher Olin Ray directed that, uh, son of the legendary director um, Fred Olin Ray. It was uh, Chris's first full-length feature film, and um, it ended up being a, a great experience for me, and Chris and I ha- uh, have a great relationship coming out of that, and I've actually been in all four of the films that he's directed since, so. Excellent. I do want to see that one also. Um, did you ever watch that uh, thing on TV? I guess, it, is it uh, uh, the Animal Planet where it is, where they have the uh, like the crocodile versus the great white? Have you ever seen that on TV? What's that called? You know, I do remember that, and I, I, I didn't specifically watch it, though, but yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, they they kind of put different animals up against each other, like who would win, the bear or the... Right, lion. right. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of that movie. I mean, it kind of reminds me. I just put a title, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's the story. me running around and a bunch of people running around from a flying Godzilla, effectively. So <laughs> now that is available to buy, right? I mean, I know you can get it at Blockbuster. Uh, Reptosaurus, I'm not sure. I know that it was released in Japan, so you could probably find, like, an import copy. I think it was called Sky Fighters in, in Japan, Okay, believe it or not. Um, but I don't know if it is, is available in, in the U.S., but definitely look for Sky Fighters um, in Japan. I will do that. Um, yeah, like and I said... And now everything... Uh, right, well, I'm sorry. So you can uh, here. Yeah, it's just... Uh, I. It's funny because the Mega Shark and all that... Really there. I mean, the titles seem funny, like weird, but if you sit and watch them, they're very entertaining. Very entertaining. The next one I yeah. want to talk to you about, um, it's actually a action fantasy, but uh, The Eve, uh, Beauty and the Blade in 2008? Yes. Um, 
That was a, it started out as a web series. They did a web series. Uh, it won a bunch of awards. It was just a small group of people here. Uh, Redscape Cinema uh, is the production company that put it out. And I played, a, shocker, I played a cop in it, which I, I do a lot of, apparently. But I played a <laughs> cop in that, um, undercover cop. And um, it was just really cool. It was kind of like when web series were just kind of starting to become the new hot thing. They were kind of out in front of the crowd and just did a really great job of it. Later on, they went back and they took the whole thing and re-edited it as a film and released it on DVD, so that is available. And I think you can go to redscapecinema.com. Um, I think that's their website, and get a hold of it. Okay, cool. Now, there's another TV series which i never seen. Um, it came out in 2007. I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, you, you were in a couple uh, episodes, The Lair. <laughs> yeah, I was actually in, I think, three or four episodes. Um, I mentioned Fred Olin Ray, uh, the director. Fred was the writer and director of that show. And um, I, having had worked with him a couple times, he brought me into audition for it. And I was recurring. It was a show where they had uh, vampires and they had werewolves on it. And it was kind of before True Blood and before a lot of the vampire werewolf stuff that's going on now. Okay. And I was the EMT. So whenever a vampire, you know, somebody would get killed, I would go with the little gurney and the ambulance and pick up the dead body. So I was like, yeah, keep killing people so I can keep coming out. And, keep <laughs> <laughs> and it also, uh, I guess the, one of my uh, guys that I talked to, um, Dylan Vox, he played yes. Colin. He's a very talented actor. Uh, Dylan, Dylan is great. Dylan is, is definitely very talented. I've actually worked with Dylan probably at, at least seven or eight different times on different projects. Uh, he's in um, Battle of Los Angeles with me. Uh, he had a he had a role in Mega Shark vs. Crocosaurus with me. So we've worked. He was in Titanic two with me. Um, so we've worked together a lot. Okay. Well, the next one is a thriller, which I do thrillers too. I find it interesting. Uh, it's called The Stalker Within in two thousand nine. Yeah, Stalker Within was a stretch for me. Um, I played a music producer who um, gets murdered, and I was like best friends with the lead character. Uh, but he he was he was gay, and he was very flamboyant, and very out there, and uh, so it was very different from any role okay. I've ever played. Now, Definitely now, a challenge for me. Now, since you since you mentioned it, I, I often wondered that. Um, when you're an actor like that and you, you portray a role like that, it has to be hard. And I'm sure it's a job, you want some work, but it's still a battle in it. Like, like you said, it's a battle. Well, I mean, it, it wasn't a battle. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with who I am. So, you no, know, no. I actor, it, it's no different than, like, when I'm playing a guy who's murdering people. I mean, I just had to do my work, and it's just a different role from what Rough. I'm know. Like, if, if I have to play a cop, I don't yeah. want to say it's easy, but it is easier because I've done it so many times. Right. Well, that's what I meant. Uh, yeah. This guy was just so different because, like, he wore... We filmed in Miami for six weeks, and my character wore suits all the time. And if you've ever been in Miami in June, you know what the temperature yes. and the humidity is like. And he, he was just kind of a little eccentric. Um, he wore suits, was very sharply dressed, but he always had... I always wore sandals as the character. That was part of how it was written. Um... And he was just different. Uh, he really cared about people, but he also was a real SOB and would, would give people a hard time. So there were just a lot of different layers that I had to kind of build to put together to, to feel comfortable in, in, in the skin of that character. Okay. Well, this next one that I talked to you about earlier this morning um, that I really enjoyed. The next movie I want to talk to you about, Gerald, is uh, the movie Silent Venom in 2009. Um, I haven't seen Luke Perry in a long, long time. And I seen him in this movie, so I checked it out. And people are going to kill Luke Perry. Personally, I think did an awesome job in this for what he, you know, for what he had to do. It was quite different for him. Um, what was the experience like for you to work with Luke Perry in uh, in, in this movie? Well, it's funny because I, I played the engineering officer, so I was down in the engineering department of the sub, and he was up in the command center. So we never actually, even though our scenes are all together, we never actually worked together. Okay. Um, I mean, I saw him around set. I saw him at the rap party. We talked. He's a great guy. But I never literally was in the same room with him on camera talking to him. I was talking on the phone 
and he was supposed to be on the other end, but he actually wasn't on the other end. And then when he was talking on the phone to me, I wasn't on the other end. Oh, okay, I get it. So part of the movie-making magic is they put us together, but we really didn't work directly together. But, you know, it was great to work with Luke Perry. You know, I, I grew up with Nine when 90210 was at its peak. And, yep. And, you know, so to work with Dylan McKay was crazy. And then, you know, Krista Allen was in the movie. And then Tom Berenger, who has been, you know, forever, and it just worked in all kinds of ways. I would have loved to have worked in, uh, was in, had a small in that movie. So it was just a great experience. As an actor, at that time of my career, it was great because it's like, okay, now you're working with the types of people that you want to work with. You want to cut moving up the up the chain to where you're working with bigger and bigger names, and then hopefully one day you're that big. Yep. And Heron Jackson, I thought, was very good in this movie, too. Uh, who was very good? Heron Jackson. Sailor Road. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I like his performance also. Um, yeah, like I said, I saw this by accident, actually. It was weird how I came across it, but I went out and, and bought a copy. I went to um, Amazon and bought a copy for my collection. And, uh, I'll, you know, I, I like snake movies. I mean, I, um, <laughs> my wife gets freaked out by snakes, and she won't watch it because uh, I made her watch Anaconda. Remember that one? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> but uh, the next one, it's uh, personally, I didn't watch the first one. Um, Titanic, but uh, I do own both of them. Um, but they're sitting. My my wife watches them. But Titanic two in two thousand ten. Now it's not a horror, but I'm going to bring it up only because the first one everybody knows about. Do you want to talk a little bit about Titanic two to the, to the li- listeners? Yeah, Titanic two is 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 pretty much a disaster movie. Um, uh, production company called the 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 Asylum that I'm sure your 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 viewers and listeners are familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, they do a ton of of creature movies and horror films and different things. Um, they came up with the concept of you know what if they build a new Titanic and they send it out to sale, and lo and behold, pretty much the same thing happens. It hits a it hits an iceberg. But what if if someone was there to kind of document it and see everything that happened? Right. So. Um, yeah, and then, you know, the thing about it is a lot of people make fun of it, or they, they say, oh, that's crazy, I can't believe they would make another Titanic. You know, the thing, it, it, it got a ton of press. Um, from what I understand, it did fairly well. So somebody is out there watching, you know, watching the movies. Uh, so some people may like it, but some people apparently do. For me, I was playing a uh, executive officer on a submarine, um, and we did not necessarily meet the best of demises. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. I might, you know... I have so many movies to watch. I'm so behind. I mean, you can only watch so many in a period of time. It's like, man, am I ever going to get caught up? But Just watch all the movies I'm in first. And then... <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> well, actually, the, the next one... Um, I actually heard this on the radio station when I was going to work. Um, they're talking about uh, Mega Shark versus uh, Crocosaurus. And they're, and they're talking about... Uh, they, What's his name? Urkel, but what's his real name? We uh, Jaleel White. Yes, and they mentioned about him on a radio talk show in the morning about him starring in a in a uh, you know like a sci-fi horror movie. Here we go. Now, did you work with uh, Jaleel? I worked with Jaleel. I didn't work on camera with the Jaleel, but I was around Jaleel a whole lot when we shot. Okay. Um, you know, our other stars in the movie were Robert Picardo, who yep. is from Star Trek Voyager, yep. and uh, Gary Stretch, uh, who is in Alexander and has been in, in, a, in a bunch of movies. I worked with Gary. Uh, all my scenes were pretty much with Gary. Um, I didn't I didn't work directly with Julio or Robert. Uh, Dylan, who we talked, Dylan Box actually worked a lot with uh, both of them, actually, in, in the role that he had. Okay. But um, I was around the set every day, all day. Um, I I got to know those guys really well. Jaleel's a, Jaleel's a great guy, and uh, it was fun to work with him. Yep. And another good guy on there, too, I like him a lot, is Michael Gaglio. Yeah. Uh, Mike just... Mike... All right, so the, there's, a, there's a little group of people that I've been fortunate enough to work with a lot. Christopher Olin Ray, Fred Olin Ray... Uh, Dylan Bob yep. and um, Mike Mike Gaglio definitely fits into that group. He's just <laughs> the, the greatest guy, and uh, he'll do anything to try and make your film successful and to help you out if he can. Yeah, we talk every now and then on, on, on Facebook, and <laughs> some of the stuff he says is funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. I actually I... just I 
just cast him in a movie uh, that he'll be filming in the next week. So, oh, good deal. Uh, it's kind of fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna check yeah. his. I'm gonna check his baby out though. Uh, Mega Shark versus Crocosaurus. I have to get my butt in gear and get these movies watched. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll talk to the production company. Maybe we can send one out to you. Oh, cool. The next one, uh, it's t- 2011 release, and I know I know you can't say too much about it. But it caught my eye because it has the title word of spiders. But um, Camel Spiders, 2011, you played an army medic. I know, yes, I mean, Camel Spiders uh, is directed by literally a legend uh, of the horror and, and creature genres, and that's uh, Jim Wynorski. Yep. Uh, you know, I'm sure your, your listeners know his extensive, extensive um, resume. And um, I got called and asked to come in and play uh, to work on the film for a day, for a day. I believe it was a day or maybe two, um, and play this army medic. And it was great. I mean, I got to be in a movie with C. Thomas Howell. Yeah. Um, uh, Gigi Arnetta is, is is a great actress. I got to work. Uh, got to be in a movie with her. So um, and I got to act like I was being eaten by giant camel spiders. You know, I I almost have the trifecta. I, I've wrestled with reptosauruses and snakes. And <laughs> yeah. Spiders. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> You know, I'm trying, and, and, and I'm trying to, you know, make sure everything. I, I hit every creature. I, you know, I got to do piranha sooner or later, but I'm trying to hit every creature out there. Well, I can tell you one thing: Brian Krause is one hell of an actor, too. Definitely. Have you seen his movie Definitely. that he did that 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 serial killer um, came out last year? Oh crap! He played. I'm not familiar with. It. Oh, yeah. Well, whatever. I can't think of it either. Is that the Cyrus movie? That's it. That's yeah, it. I, actually, I did see Cyrus. Yeah. That's a good one. He played it very well. I was very impressed with him in that movie. Yeah, uh, Jessica Cameron, uh, I'm familiar with her. Um, she was in that movie, um, Death of the Dead. Well, one thing that happens is, um, you know, you if you work hard as an actor and you do a good job, yeah. um, people like your work and respect you as a person, they're going to try and bring you back. Right. Um, there's plenty of movies where I bring actors in or, or people bring me back and I audition for it. Sometimes I get the part, sometimes I don't. But they always bring me back because they respect my work. Um, and sometimes I'm right for the part, sometimes I'm not. Right. So it, it's great that if you can, uh, you know, if you, if you can really work hard and treat people right, that it will continue to get you opportunities. And that's why you have a situation where I work with with the, the, the Rays so much, or I work with Mike Gaglio so much, or I've worked with Dylan Vox so many times. Right. Um, because people like to reuse people that they that they know and they respect their work. And Shane Van Dyke, I think you worked with him twice, didn't you? Yeah, I've, I've worked with Shane a couple of times. Uh, he was in Super Sharks, and he yep. directed Titanic 2. And we may have worked together once before. I'm, I'm thinking there was a third time in there somewhere. But uh, I'm sure it won't be the last time I worked with Shane either. <laughs> Well, we were talking about Luke Perry. Um, now, there's another actor in the um, Super Shark that does a lot of the same thing, and that's John Schneider. Yeah. Now, there's one movie that he was in, okay? I got five minutes through it, and I turned it off. That was Lake Placid 2. I okay. don't know I don't know why. I just couldn't... Not, it's not because of him, mind you. I just couldn't... The first one was great. I apologize, not to forget it. I meant part three. I couldn't watch. I'll, take, I'll backpedal on that one. But John Schneider is another one that uh, plays a lot of the uh, low budget horror movies too, like shark movies and stuff. And I think yeah. he does it very well. Oh, great! Well, I him. really, I, you know, it's funny for for me. I just kind of geeked out like a little kid because I'm kind of like I want John Schneider to come to set and bring the bring the General Lee. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> Can he come to work in the General Lee? I want to drive the General Lee. Um, and that's what's kind of crazy is that, you know, I, Jimmy Walker, J.J., J.J. Jimmy Walker was in this movie as well. Yeah. So, you know, I wanted him to, like, you know, come and paint me a picture because he always played it like he was an artist <laughs> in, the, in good time. <laughs> Dynamite. And John Snyder come to General Lee, and then everything would be great. <laughs> he plays Dynamite Stevens. Isn't that ironic? Yeah. Oh man! Yeah. Now, what is Super Shark about exactly? I mean, what can you say about? It, I should say. Yeah. Uh, well, Super Shark. Well, first off, the trailer is out there, so make sure that you you can either post it or have your have your people go to Google and search it out. It is a literally crazy take on a on a shark movie. It's about this giant shark that is so big and so powerful 
that it can actually walk on the land on its fins. Oh, God. And it can jump through the air and fly great distances. <laughs> <laughs> I got to see this. <laughs> yeah, please, please go see the trailer because it's, if you like Creatures movies, it's a Creature movie, but this one, it's just, there are downright comedic elements to it. It's it's just kind of, it doesn't take itself too seriously. They have a tank in it that instead of having the little treads, it actually has feet and legs and walks on four legs. It's it's just, oh. it's just crazy. <laughs> I got to check that out. I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll post uh, the trailer on my blog my blog say I have a trailer blog say I'll put down there see how it goes um, the next one um, it's not a horror but uh, Almighty Thor and it has my interest in this what can you say about that well, Almighty Thor is uh, uh, you know Marvel is coming out with their Thor movie and um, since Thor is initially a Norse god Marvel doesn't necessarily own the character of Thor so a uh, production company decided to do a movie about Thor, and Thor's kind of coming of age. Who was Thor before he became the king of all the gods? Um, so they put this movie together. They got uh, they assembled what I thought was a great cast. Uh, we, we have Richard Grieco from 21 Jump Street, who yep. is playing Loki, the villain, and, and was just a, such a pleasure to work with. We have Kevin Nash, the wrestler, yep. who plays Odin, who is Thor's father, and Kevin, it was just absolutely amazing to work with and it, it was just such a pleasure to, to, to work with him um, and we have Patricia Velasquez um, she, she plays uh, Yarn Saxa who helps Thor kind of develop from being a impudent teenager to being the king of all, all of the gods and uh, the lead the guy playing Thor is, is a young and up and coming actor uh, named Cody Deal and I did play a small role in the film uh, I really wasn't supposed to uh, I was actually hired to coach Cody, the lead actor, to be his on-set coach uh, and just make sure he was prepared for the role and to kind of make sure that uh, Christopher Olin Ray, the director, got the performance out of Cody that he wanted. Um, and then since I've been in all of Chris's movies, Chris said, well, we have this little role. Um, I know you have another job and you're focused on that, but I want you to do this. Uh, so it's, it was great. You know, he's done four films. I've been in all four. and. You know, truthfully, uh, we have the kind of relationship. If he asked me to be like an assistant and production assistant on a film, I'd do it for him because, you know, I, I knew, wouldn't know that he wouldn't ask me unless he really needed the help. Right. Yeah, I, I want to check that out as well. Yeah, that'll be coming out, um, I believe, in April. It's going to be on a major, major science fiction related um, network. I, I can't necessarily specifically say any more than that, but uh, that'll be coming out on April. I think the air date is going to be the 20th, 21st, somewhere right around there in, in April, so that you don't have too long to wait on that one. Sweet. The next one, um, we talked about off the air, but we're going to talk about it now. Battle of Los Angeles in 2011. Um, what exactly is this about? Well, it's, uh, one, first off, one of the funnest roles I've ever played. Um it uh, is about aliens coming to Los Angeles and literally declaring war on mankind and destroying, effectively destroying Los Angeles. And a group of soldiers uh, that are fighting to, to stop them and, you know, save the day or what's left of Los Angeles and, and possibly all of mankind. Um, Battle of Los Angeles is great. It has Nia Peoples in it. Yep. And uh, Nia is as beautiful today as she was probably when she was 21 years old and uh, it also has Kel Mitchell from the Keenan and Kel show in it Kel, Kel, Kel plays the lead he plays Tyler Yep. and Kel was uh, they, they were both just uh, a pleasure to work with also has Dylan Box in it who again another place where we worked and it has a guy named Darren Cooper in it uh, Darren was in the social network Darren was in Mega Shark versus Krakosaurus uh, Darren is an amazing actor, so definitely keep your your eye out and uh, for his work because you probably like his stuff as well. I sure will. And uh, Tim Abel. I think oh, I forgot. Yeah. Tim Abel was in it. Yeah, I've worked, I, and I've worked with Tim a bunch of times. I'm so sorry, Tim. Um, <laughs> I've worked with him several times, and uh, you know I, that's just kind of crazy that I've worked with this guy so many times, and um, he was just such a pleasure. He was in Super Shark as well that we just talked about. Sweet. Um, uh, but yeah, Tim is just an extremely, extremely talented uh, actor. You know, he has a background in special forces, and 
he has a show on ESPN where he takes, which I really love this. He takes uh, soldiers that are coming back from uh, a tour of duty, and he actually takes them and they go out and they go fishing, and they, he kind of helps them integrate back into normal life through uh, taking them out and doing kind of wilderness and fishing and different things. And I think it's on ESPN or ESPN2. But uh, I really respect that. I have several friends that are um, Iraqi, uh, Iraq war veterans, and uh, I've seen some of the things that they've had to go through coming back, just dealing with it on a mental level and different things like that. So I really, really respect that, he, that he's out there doing that. Now, one question I'm going to ask you. I noticed that um, how did you manage to get on an episode of Law & Order Los Angeles that quick? Um, well, you know, actually, I am rec- I am officially recurring on that show. Uh, my other credits have not come up yet, but okay. um, I am recurring now on Law and Order Los Angeles. Uh, I was very lucky. Um, a casting director who I had worked for before. Um, her name is um, uh, Megan Brandman. Megan had cast me on The Cleaner with Benjamin Bratt, where I played an undercover uh, police officer. Yep. And uh, she called me. She was casting Law and Order Los Angeles. She called my agent, asked me to come in. I went in and, and, and read for the role. Was fortunate enough to book it, worked and did the first episode, which um, is called Silmar. You can go to Hulu and see that on Silmar now. And then um, a few weeks later, maybe three or four weeks later, I got a call, and they wanted me to come back and do uh, another episode. That's cool. So the second episode that I did is called Carthage Circle. And that'll be coming on in February. They they were on Wednesdays, but now they're on Tuesdays. Okay. At uh, 10 p.m. They start again in February. So please, please, please support Law and Order Los Angeles. And once they come back in February, my episode will be the second episode shown when they come back. Now, um, how's it fa- uh, how's it doing so far? Did you hear? Well, they they were renewed for this next part of the season, so it, it's doing well. I mean, any show. We definitely want more viewers, and February is really important um, because it's what's called Sweet Weeks. It's when um, they they really watch all the ratings and all the okay. advertising and all that gets set for the whole for pretty much the next six months or to the it might even be for the next year. They get set based on the ratings that happen in February. So definitely tune into Law and Order Los Angeles on Tuesdays yeah. at 10 p.m. and um, I think it's nine central. And uh, support the show, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how the show's doing well. But of course, you know, nowadays shows don't get time to really develop. Um, if your show comes out and the ratings aren't great, a lot of times they will they will cancel you, cancel you, or put you on hold. Or uh, it, it happens really, really quickly. Um, some shows get really lucky, like a show like Chuck. They had ratings that were kind of on the bubble. They got canceled. Their fan base was so rabid and wrote so many letters and did so many like grassroots oriented uh, kind of kind of movements to try and get NBC to put the show back on that they actually put the show back on the air and now it's been on the air two more seasons and it's doing well. You know, I watch one I watch one episode of that and I liked it so much, but I have so much work to do in this podcast, you know, with the interviews and reviews and stuff, and emails. I don't get a chance, but lucky enough, we have that DBR. So there you go. We record it because we usually go to bed early also. But my wife does watch it all the time. She's a Law & Order fan. Hell, you know, you and I, it's like us. We grew up on Law & Order. I mean, I can remember back in back when it first came on in the 90s, you know. I remember all the different cast members. You know, they, the, the guys Orbach. that are on it now weren't on it then. You know, it's yep. changed. Jerry Orbach was the, my favorite. Uh, you know, so it, it's, it's a little, again, it's a little crazy to be part of this. I'm now a little piece, a very small piece, but a little piece of this History. huge, you know, franchise. Yep. Uh, and I'm really, I feel really grateful that I was able to do it, and uh, I hope that they'll call me for a bunch more episodes. I hope so. Oh, you know what? I just, yeah, I just realized something. You're also on, a, on another TV show that my wife watches back in 2006. What the hell? I mentioned it. L.A. Forensics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently I, I only can be on TV shows that have L.A. in the title, but. Uh, yeah, they uh the you know when you first come to when you first come to, to Los Angeles and you're pursuing your acting career, um it's very hard to break through. You know, when you want to get on a law and order, when you first get here, you're probably not even going to be able to get into audition. Right. So, you audition for other things and uh you know, small, I don't want to say smaller because they you just you audition for things that are a little bit different. 
So LA Forensics is a show where they they kind of retell stories of crimes and how a forensic team solves solves a crime. I like that show. And uh, they bring in actors to reenact all these true stories. Yep. Which is kind of cool because um, I'm really doing something that was real. Right. You know, we're reenacting whether I'm the criminal in the scene or one of the family members or even one of the crime scene people. You're reenacting something that was real, and you know, I I like the idea of that. Um, so I did. I think I did two or three episodes of that uh, early on in my career out here. And honestly, at that time in my career, it was it was really exciting, and and it was something that it was like, okay, it helped reinforce that I can come out here and I can book projects and I can do the job that I want to do for my living. Right. Well, you know what? My listeners are going to kill me, but it's my podcast. I'll do what I want. <laughs> but uh, there's, there's another show that you were on. Uh, uh, that my wife watched, and I just noticed that people are going to kill me for this. I didn't know I was pregnant. <laughs> yeah, well, when I was 16, I was pregnant, and I didn't realize it. No. <laughs> um, how yeah, you- I, I honestly, when I first heard about this show, I was like, how can they make that into a TV show? Right. And really what they do is apparently there are a lot of women out there that don't realize they're pregnant, and something happens, and they end up being rushed to the hospital, thinking that they're dying or something's happening, and then they're told, no, you're just going into labor or you're pregnant, and they didn't know that they were pregnant. I've never been pregnant, so I don't know how they would know or wouldn't know, um, but, you know, it's the same type of thing where you reenact what these people's experience were. Right. Was. And... Um, you know, I, from doing that, I did one episode of that. I actually have a couple people that I met while doing that episode that have become good friends of mine. So I'm kind of like, hey, it, w- it was fun. And at the time, it was a paying gig. I needed to make the money, and I needed the credit. So um, I don't even know if the show's still on. I think it is. But I, I have it. I have it. I think it's still buried in the bottom of my DVR somewhere. I have my episode somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but no, <laughs> I don't care. I mean, it's, it's fun just to talk about some of these TV shows because it's funny because... I just have to happen to recognize them because my wife watches them. But is there anything else? Well, but here's the thing: I want to give you credit for for talking about the shows that your wife watches, and for your audience, since I know they like gore and stuff. Yeah. You know, watching a baby being born is kind of gory. Yeah, it is really. Yeah. So. I did my son and my daughter. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, is there anything else that you have going on that the listeners might be interested in? Um. Well, we're we're uh, well. I, I'm, I'm working on a movie called 200 Miles Per Hour. That's not really not really your genre but it's kind of like a fast and the furious type movie tv movie uh i'm really excited about battle of los angeles coming out um it was kind of like just lots of explosions and crazy you know special effects and if they like anything like that they're gonna they're just gonna they're just gonna love it um if they haven't seen mega shark and crocosaurus they should definitely check that out and you know, just just thank them for listening, and thank them for 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 the support. I always appreciate it. Yeah, and I also want to see that Campbell Spiders now too. I can catch you getting. Yeah, eaten. I have not honestly. Normally, I get to see stuff a little before it comes out. Camel Spiders, I have not seen. Um, you know, I'm going to ask about that. I know somebody I can ask a little bit about what's going on with that. But uh, sweet, I, I'm I'm kind of interested in seeing how the spiders look, and you know, because what people don't understand is a lot of times when we act. We act with nothing there. There's either just a plain green screen there, or a blue screen in some cases, or there's literally nothing there. Right. And I'm laying on a big boulder on a rock, acting like some spiders coming at me, and then later on acting like the spiders grabbing me, and I'm fighting with it, and I'm literally like, there's nothing there. So if you saw the footage without them putting all the special effects in, it would probably look like I was just this deranged and crazy person. Or Tourette's. But um, yeah, so I'm always kind of interested in seeing, hey, how does it how did it turn out? How were they able to, uh, you know, especially when I have a death scene because I, I don't die. Fortunately, I don't die a lot in movies, but the few times that I have, I'm always like, okay, let me see how cool my death was. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, well, you know what? That the thing about that is, the better you are at doing it, the more uh, more opportunities of jobs that you'll get. And yeah, and that's that's very true. So. Well, I want to thank you for coming on and taking time for, for my podcast to uh, get an idea of some up-and-coming stuff that's in post-production that we're dying to see. 
Oh, the pleasure was all mine. And if anybody wants to uh, to check us out, uh, I have my my professional page on Facebook, and you can Twitter follow me on Twitter. Uh, it's just Gerald Webb with two Bs. Uh, but please, please follow us and keep supporting the movies. And um, hopefully, we'll keep making some movies that you guys like. All right, I'm going to talk to you for a couple of seconds. Have you on again down the road for something else that's interesting? Uh, definitely. Thanks for having me on, and I'll keep you aware of what's going on uh, project wise. Thank you very much. Take care. You're welcome. All right, now. Um, Hello, this is Natalie Sheets. I play Jenna in the film Madison County, and you're listening to Gruesome Herzog. Hey, horror fans, this is Ace Marrero, and you are listening to Gruesome Herzog. Dig it! I'm Jessica Funneborn, and I'm listening to Gruesome Herzog. This is Yvette Corvea, and most of you know me as Marla from Run Bitch Run. She's a really evil, crazy bitch. And you guys are listening to Gruesome Herzog. Hi, this is David Z. Stamp, and you're listening to Gruesome Herzogs. Hey, this is Bill Oberst, Jr. I play Dale in the film Dismal, and as Dale would say, let me tell you something. You're listening to Gruesome Herzog. You got Dale's word on that. Hey, this is James Cotton. I'm a director, writer, producer. You're listening to Gruesome Herzog. Jack Harrison, action actor and stunt coordinator of all three stunt teams. I played the character Idiot in the movie Dismal, and you're listening to Gruesome Herzog. (laughs) 